So I've been asked to do a sermon today uh, on prayer. And what I'm going to do is structure it uh, with three sort of biblical uh, tips, uh, attitudes. How should we approach prayer? And then um, five rather technical steps that you should have in an intercessory prayer. So uh, in other words, pray, praying for other people. Uh, so that's what that's what the sermon will be <clears throat> focusing on today. So, but let's let's just start with a short prayer before we uh, before we get going. Father, may the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts conform to your will and to your word. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, at All Saints uh, Armors Fort, we are doing a series of studies on unanswered. Uh, prayer. Uh, Billy Graham once said, the only time my prayers are never answered is on the golf course. Anyway, there's all kinds of theological discussions you could have around that one. So be that as it may, today I'd like to talk to you not so much about unanswered prayer, uh, but more about prayer in general and ends with some ideas for those uh, intercessory prayers, praying uh, on behalf of others. Today, I will uh, also be doing the intercessory prayer, uh, so you'll me see an immediate application. There are many ways we can get confused about what prayer is and what we can expect of it. Uh, hear me well, uh, prayer needs to be a pillar of your spiritual life and how you praise our Lord and Savior. Uh, but still, we often wonder, what's a good prayer? And what's a good thing to pray about? What subjects can we pray about? For example, can you pray for a parking space at the supermarket? Well, Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. In the Alpha Course, the course that is, is designed for a new <clears throat> those people that are new to the faith, an introductory course, there is a scene where the host admits praying about his athlete's foot and also admits that it was not healed by prayer. Philippians says, every situation, but parking spaces and athlete's foot do seem to be trivial prayer subjects. Reading on to Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. These verses seem to indicate we should pray about weightier matters of faith and unity and with thanksgiving or gratefulness. We have other issues that we may find confusing. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. We had a reading today uh, from Jonah. Jonah prays one thing, God does another, and Jonah wishes he was dead. And in Lamentations 3.44, it suggests that prayers may be ineffective due to a secret sin. You have covered yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can get through. Here's part of a, a prayer from uh, Ukrainian Christians. I'll just read some of the key phrases. <clears throat> um, Brothers and sisters, we are threatened by aggressors. Uh, the path to uh, complete domination of the country of Ukraine. Uh, and it ends with um, uh, a plea to God to send your heavenly legions, O Lord, commanded by the patron of Kiev, Archangel Michael, to crush the desires of the aggressor whose desire is to eradicate our people. Well, there are Russian Orthodox that are praying more or less the opposite prayer. So what is, you know, what are we supposed to think? Well, Paul, 
the apostle to the Gentiles. So if we go to Galatians 1, he says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. So there is something especially special uh, from Paul to you and me on this subject. So let's, let's start there. So first, I'd like to begin with our position in Christ. You're going to pray to God. What is, what is your position? Uh, I mean, you know, if we're going to pray, are we dirty sinners? Are we precious children? Are we beings with total equality? Well, we are his, it was his body. We are the body of Christ. Consequently, our ailments and our problems reflect the mental and physical sufferings that he went through for us. That's from 2 Corinthians 4. Another thing to keep in mind is that we are under grace. Paul preaches grace. And simply through faith, not works, not good things we do, not how nice we are, we are saved through our faith in the nearly finished work of Christ. He still does need to come back. Um, we are in his body. So we are seated with him in heavenly places. We are called to understand this grace and our position by being workmen, 2 Timothy 2, who search the scriptures, Acts 17, through prayer guided by the Spirit. Search the scriptures to show yourself a workman approved. This leads to my first biblical tip, and that is thankfulness. Thanksgiving, rejoicing, joy. Our prayer should have a key ingredient of rejoicing because of what we have found. Whatever your situation, and I know some situations are frightening beyond words, but whatever your situation, you are part of Christ. You are part of his holy body. You are saved and protected because of his work. Even Paul after praying three times, was not healed. But God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Indeed, we can rejoice because the grace God has showered on us is sufficient. This is not to say that we should feel grateful to have mental or physical pain um, but our example, Paul, was, after all, praying for healing. But we can find rest in the fact that in the end, we are already saved and that our Savior is not distant from our physical or mental pain. He suffered as much as anyone while in human form. He knows your pain. And through his grace, he tells us he provided for you immeasurably more than you ask or imagine. <clears throat> so I just give you an everyday example. We are all willing to suffer, suffer and sacrifice for goals that we think are worthy. If you practice football, you sacrifice time and effort and sweat and perhaps even injury in order to win games. If you are in rehabilitation for that new hip, you sacrifice comfort and time in order to walk properly uh, again. And when you reach the goal, much of the discomfort is forgotten, uh, as many women after childbirth report. And it's forgotten because of attaining the great prize. This is my second biblical tip. Keep your eye on the prize. This is the prize that results not only from the promises of God for those who believe, but the rewards we can expect for running the race well, doing everything as unto the Lord. Suffering through the same sorts of things that Christ suffered and touching the tape at the end of the race having kept our eyes on Christ and followed the rules. 
We have hope of glory, the renewal of our mortal and corruptible bodies so that we can serve God eternally. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. It doesn't mean that there's only going to be one winner um, when it comes to salvation. It means run like that person you've seen run who won the race. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Rejoice and keep your eye on the prize. And here's my third attitude or biblical tip. Prayer is not a way to manipulate God. It is a way to speak to him. We pray not because he answers every request, but because he can do abundantly above what we request. And how would you or I even know what is best? Even in what we call the Lord's Prayer, billions of Christians around the world say, your will be done. But then so often people actually substitute my will, resulting in confusion and disappointment concerning prayer. So rejoice, keep your eye on the prize, speak to God through your heart, from your heart. Uh, again, Paul <clears throat> says in Ephesians 3, he says, My work is to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, for which ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Now, you're speaking to him from your heart, and you're speaking in freedom and confidence. And I, that's the New International Version. I like the King James better. It says, speaking to him in boldness. And it would, it would, it's, it's too good to be true if it wasn't written in Holy Scripture. So the three biblical tips are start with thankfulness and rejoicing as you run the race and speak to your God with boldness, respect, but the boldness you have been given through your position in the body of Christ Jesus. So what about those intercession prayers? Well, whether you're doing an intercession prayer here in front of the church or alone in your prayer closet, there are certain ways of doing it more, more or less correctly. You, you, need a, you need a structure. Ephesians 1, 9 to 14, I won't read the whole thing, I'm just going to give you some snippets, but it starts out, for this reason, Paul says, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. What was he praying about? This should give us an idea of what we can pray about. So here they are, knowledge of his will, wisdom and understanding, live a life worthy of the Lord, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, having great endurance and patience, giving joyful thanks to the Father because he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his Son. Well, that's some pretty meaty stuff. So pray to the Father in the name of the Son, interpreted by the Holy Spirit. Where will we find God's will? That was the first thing. What it was God's will. You will find it in Scripture. Read it all the time and use the Scripture readings for the Sunday that you're doing the intercession prayer, if you're doing it in front of the church. Use those in order to inform and give you ideas about how to pray. So today we were looking at Philippians 4, we were looking at Luke 11, and we were looking at uh, Jonah. And all those should inform um, uh, they should inform the sermon and also uh, the intercession prayer. So the structure should look like this. We've had three attitudes and now we know we, we begin with thanksgiving, uh, sorry, that we pray to the Father in the name of the Son, interpreted by the Holy Spirit. We get the will of God from Scripture. 
And then we structure it. So if you're going to deliver it, you structure it <clears throat> uh, beginning with giving thanksgiving to God the Father. Two lines, two, two, two little sentences. A uh, small paragraph, we pray for the church. So you can pray for your pastor, you can pray for the bishops, uh, but all the way down to the people who are doing the creche or the Sunday school or, or making the coffee or greeting at the door. Um, Timothy then, uh, Timothy says in 1 Timothy 2, he says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So that's the third section, lit, small paragraph, uh, maybe three or four uh, small sentences, praying for world leaders. Uh, or leaders in, in, your, in your area. The fourth one is pray for society and our brothers and sisters in need. Uh, again, 1 Timothy 2 says, It is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So praying for these people, um, uh, uh, em empathizing with their plight. I mean, it could be Hindus in India that have gone through an earthquake. Well, uh, we, we, can, we can pray that uh, for those people and that God opens their eyes and uses this terrible tragedy uh, to, to, to bring more people to him. Um, and the last section is uh, prayer, prayer and petition for individuals, for friends, for family, um, uh, that may be experiencing a particularly confusing, uh, hard or trying times, or maybe maybe they just gotten a baby, and we can pray for those people. You know that they they're going on this new uh, new journey with this little this little uh, child. Um, you you can put that in there as well, and pray that the God of peace and the messages and and the promises of Christ will give that peace which passes understanding. So I'll sum it up and, and we'll close in a prayer. Rejoice, keep your eye on the prize, run that race, come to God in boldness in your prayers. And then when structuring, give thanksgiving and rejoicing to the Father, pray for the church, pray for leaders, pray for society and fellow Christians, and finally, praise, uh, pray for those close to you. So let us, let us end now in a prayer. Father, we thank you for the sacrificial gift of your Christ and the peace our faith and hope in him brings. Bless us in the coming week with strength and to be of the same mind as you through the power of your word and spirit. Grant us ever deeper knowledge of your mercy and grace. Be with those who struggle with their faith or face persecution for it. Strengthen all those who endeavor to follow you. All this we pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen.